Hi guys, so welcome to our first ever podcast by Nespace and I am your moderator, Shay. And today I have here with me Dr. Crystal Asong, who was a medical doctor and turned to life purpose coach and founder of Awakening Academy, sorry, Awaken Academy, trainer and a speaker here with us today. So today we're going to talk about finding the right career by being yourself. So my first question to you, Dr. Crystal, since everyone knows that she's a medical doctor turned into a life coach, right? Why do you quit? Yeah, the magic question, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's asking. Yeah. Uh, before that, I would like to say thank you, Shay, for the introduction. Um, and also thank you to Nest Space for inviting me. Glad and excited to be here. So, yeah, as you mentioned, I was a medical doctor turned life purpose coach. Um, I resigned from being a medical doctor last year in December, actually. So it's still quite recent. Mm, yeah, yeah. I started my journey as a medical doctor in April last year. Oh. Yeah. So after eight months into being a medical doctor, we call it housemanship. So okay. being a junior doctor, we uh, we have to undergo this two-year compulsory service called housemanship. Okay. Yeah. But I only managed eight months. So after eight months, I told myself, okay, this is not not this for me not anymore. For like <laughs> this is yeah. Like I'm done with this. <laughs> so like by December, I resigned. Mm -hmm. But like the thing is, being a medical doctor has always been my dream. I've always wanted to be a medical doctor ever since I was young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for some people, uh, when they're young, they don't really know what they want to do, right? But yeah. I already know like at that moment, even at seven years old, I remember in primary school, like I want to grow up and be a doctor. That's what I wanted. Oh. I don't know how. Maybe it was implanted in me by my parents or by, <laughs> by society or something. But yeah, ever since I was a young kid, I was always naturally curious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I come from a small town in Strawa. Okay. Yeah, uh, this oil and gas town in Bintulu. Oh. Yeah, we're one of the biggest oil and gas contributor for the nation, to, huh? uh, FYI. Yeah. So yeah, so I was from that small town and then I was always curious about what is beyond this this small town that I was confined in. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I wanted, I love learning. I loved exploring and uh, discovering about many new experiences and trying out many different things. Mm -hmm. And also because I love to learn, I think it was also natural for me to be studious at school. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, academically I did well. Okay. So school was was a breeze for me. Yeah. I'm not trying to brag, but it was it was a breeze because school is more like a road memorization. Like you yeah. you read, you memorize. So yeah, I did well in exams, and we always joke, right? Like this is Asian meme. Yeah, yeah, this is Asian meme. Like they say, like when if you do well in school, you can only grow up to be either four things. A doctor, doctor, a lawyer, <laughs> an engineer, or a family failure. <laughs> so, True. yeah. So I chose the pathway of becoming a doctor okay. because I love studying about human, the human body and how our human body yeah. works. Because you were curious, right? And yeah, I was curious. And then I wanted to know about myself and how, you know, this physical body mm -hmm, works. Mm -hmm. And I also love biology in school. So I became a doctor and also because I love the idea of being able to help people. Right. And able to cure uh, whatever they're going through health health wise mm -hmm. and creating an impact in their lives in that way Yeah, so I worked my way up through university ace all my exams interviews uh, Studied <coughs> sorry <coughs> studied in one of the best medical universities in Malaysia mm -hmm, University mm -hmm. of Malaya yeah. and then graduated and then finally I told myself like Yes, I mean, I'm in the pinnacle of my life. Like, yeah. I've been working my whole life for this one moment. Uh -huh. Like, I'm finally here, right? Yep. Yeah, and so, uh, and also my parents were very proud, and I could see the pride in, the, in their face, you know, like their face, face, like their face beaming with pride whenever yeah. they introduced me to, the, to their friends. So that's all a doctor could ask for, yeah. like, just to make <laughs> yes. your parents proud. So, and then I started becoming a medical doctor last year as i mentioned in april at first i was very excited mm -hmm. because i also i was curious mm -hmm. so i wanted to learn as much as i can within a very short time frame that i have and adapt as much as possible in the very fast-paced working environment mm -hmm. yeah and, and trying to be of of good use to my colleagues and also to my patients 
So, but then after a few weeks went by, I started to face a terrible burnout. Burnout. Yeah, just I think like three months in. Yeah. Also, I was in one of the hardest postings in housemanship. In I was in medical postings. So in housemanship, you have six postings. Okay. So six postings. You have to com each posting is uh, a total duration of four months. Okay. Yeah. So three months in had a serious burnout. I was drained. I had to wake up 5 a.m., be by the hospital at six. If I'm lucky, I get to go home on time. If not, I have to stay back for another two to three hours. Which is what time? Going, like, so you spend your days in the hospital almost 12 hours or more than 12 hours, is it? Yes, most of the time, yeah. Because like there's a lot of pending work and when the new people, the new shift comes in, like mm -hmm. you don't want to just hand over right. unfinished work, right? Yeah. You want to like finish them and then hand them over properly. Yeah. But because there was so much to do and especially it's my first posting, like I'm still learning, still trying to adapt. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible to complete it within the, the time frame that I was given. All right. Yeah. So like short shift is supposed to finish by five. Long shift is supposed to finish by 9 p.m. 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah, so from... And then you have to get up again at 5 and then continue yep. working the next day? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's how uh, the houseman life is. Yeah, wow. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, a sneak peek into the life of a houseman. Yeah, so that's what I had to go through and also all of the housemen have to go through now. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. So after a few months in and then I started to ask myself the scary, dark question that I've been avoiding and trying to ignore for the longest time, mm -hmm. which is, is this the right career for me? Have I made the wrong decision? And if I quit, does it mean that I've wasted five years of medical school? Yeah. And it's just not five years, you know, because last year I was 26 years old. Mm -hmm. So my whole life was uh, like, to, was working towards this one point, yeah. which is to be a doctor. Be a doctor yeah. So if I resign, does it mean that my whole life has gone to waste? <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I understand that. It's so, more like, is, is it worth it to after, you know, going through all that and then you just quit? I 26 guess. years of life. Yeah. 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 After having a dream from like the age of seven and then thinking that, okay, this is what I want to do. And then suddenly when you are at your dream, at the peak of that, and then you just figure out that, oh, this is not for me, right? Yeah. Okay, it must be really, really hard for you to come up with that question also, yeah. you know? So how do you face that? So that's why, that's why I try to avoid it for the longest time, but, <laughs> but like the thing is about life, I realize is that you don't know until you try. Yeah, right. That's you true. will never know if something is right for you or wrong for you until you experience it for yourself. True. Because for me, for the longest time, I always thought that being a doctor is what I wanted. It's the right thing for me. Mm -hmm. But until I experience being a doctor, only then I am more aware or I, like I realize, okay, maybe this is not, not for me. this is not what I thought mm. or this is not what I, I envision it to be. Okay. Like what else is out there? So you start getting more curious about the outside world, right? Because mm. you have known this. Yeah. You have known how is it to be a doctor, yeah. right? Okay, so that's the reason why you quit. It's really interesting yeah. because after all those years mm. dreaming to be a doctor since, at the age, you know, since small and then, you know, you've been working so hard getting to yeah. that point and then after three months of being it and then you just... Okay, I cannot do this. Yep. Yeah, it's very devastating actually. Also, you would question yourself about your self-worth and then is this worth it also, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and because like being a doctor is, you know, especially in our society, it's something that is, um, I mean, people look up to you yes. when you become a doctor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you resign, you have to receive a lot of, you know, like backlash, a lot of judgment, stigma, not only from the medical fraternity, but also from society, from your own family members. So it's a lot to deal. And I think a lot of my colleagues, even though at some point, I believe that they are also questioning their career, but this fear of being, of feeling rejected in a mm. way, 
mm-hmm. is preventing them from taking the true, next leap. True. Yeah. And I realized this as well, you know, especially after I resigned. So I resigned uh, and I, I knew that what, after I resigned, like I'm going to face a lot of like backlash, backlash. or judgment from yes. other people. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to break this cycle. See. I didn't want this to continue. I, I always knew that I am more than what I do for a living. I am mm-hmm. more than my career. And I wanted to teach people that. I wanted to create that awareness. And one of the things that I did was I started my YouTube channel mm-hmm. where I posted videos mm-hmm. of me resigning from housemanship because mm-hmm. I realized that there, was, there were very, very few videos about people quitting housemanship. Yes. There were a lot of videos about how to do housemanship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to quitting, no one wants to do it. Yeah. Even though I know that there's a, there are people there who resign for sure, but yeah. they don't want to uh, say it publicly because it's something that is deemed shameful. You know, it's, like a it's almost like a taboo. Like a taboo. Yeah, yeah. it's almost like a taboo, right? And I, I don't want that. Like I wanted to break that. So that's why I started posting videos of me sharing my experience, going through the whole process, and surprisingly. A lot of people were engaged with the content. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's something new, something interesting, you mm. know, because no, not many has done it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you are one of the first ones to be vulnerable and say that, yeah, hey. Yep. I used to be a husband. Uh, sorry. I used to be a medical doctor and yeah. then now I quit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's very brave of you to do that and having yeah. that kind of content putting yourself out there and yeah. turn yourself to be... Is this also why you you are so interested in being a life coach? Yes. Yeah. So after I posted all of, all the videos, mm-hmm. people were engaged and then they started reaching out to me through social media, like personal DMs, right. sharing with me about their own struggles. Nice. You know, like they are housemans themselves mm-hmm. and then they reach out to me. So they're talking about how they are going through housemanship, uh, they're contemplating about quitting, like they're struggling, they don't really enjoy what they're doing anymore mm-hmm. and then they're asking me for advice or opinion. Yeah. Ah. So I try as much as I can to, you know, to help them, to cater to them. But that moment also sparked the inspiration for me to like, like I told myself like, why don't I make this as my new purpose, mm-hmm. like as my career since I've already gone through the journey and I've learned so much throughout my own process and I've developed my own framework of how to, you know, discover yeah. which career suits you. Mm-hmm. Why not I make it as my career and help other people? And so that's what that's how I was inspired to do what I'm doing today, which is to be a life purpose coach. Wow, oh, that's inspiring though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. it's such a brave um first step you know to Mm. to to do what you do now and not only for those who were in the medical field Mm. i mean in any field for those who actually thinking that oh i have to do this and then they're just so scared to break the cycle um to break the stigma of quitting and then finding a new job trying new things you know yeah because in our society especially asians i see that you know you have to get a great job in being corporate or be this and that like yeah. based on the the environment or the the place you live i mean you grew up with mm. and your parents and how they you know ask them as as you to be like okay you have to be a lawyer you have to be this you have to be that and then if you don't get to that um but you don't leave that expectation you're you're considered as a failure mm. but for you to you know turn it around turn 180 is just a brave thing to do. I really, really inspired. I really, really am. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. Inspired yeah. by you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, as a life coach, right? Mm. Um, what do you think, and how do you define the right career for a person? Yeah. So, for me personally, like the right career for you is a career that is aligned with who you are. Mm-hmm. So no one person is the same. We are all different in so many ways, but also we are all, we are the same in so many ways as well. Oh yeah. yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> for example, like we are the same as in, in a sense that we all want to love and to be loved. True. We all want to do work that is meaningful and purposeful. We all want to live a fulfilling life. Yeah. But we all want it in different ways. Right. We all want to express express our authenticity in different ways. Correct. Yeah. So 
we are all unique, you know. Mm -hmm. We all have our own unique talents, skills, strengths, um, personalities. We value different things. Sure. Yeah, what I value may be different from what you value, you know, right. and vice versa. So it's about discovering that part of yourself first before finding a career. Because the last thing that you want is going from job to job you know, like job hopping, yeah. only to having, only to experience the same problem all over again. Right. Yeah, because right. I realized that some people, they want to, they go from this job and then to the next job and then to the next job. And they, they ask themselves, I mean, they don't really ask themselves why yeah. are they, are they switching Switch. careers so often? Yeah, correct. You know? So yeah. they always look at the outside rather than the inside. Yes. You should have just reflect. They, do, they didn't have the time to actually reflect on what they want and what they value mm. as an individual, but rather to, to just, you know, um, think about how the society perceive this career, this job to be a good one for them. Exactly. Yeah. So the thing is, we think the answer is out there. And so we go out there to find the answer. Right. But actually all the answer is it. already within. Wow. It's already inside, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like all your talents, all your passion, um, your strengths, values, your personality is all in here. Yeah. Uh, I read this book the other day about, about career. And they say that when, according to research, they say that when someone wants to find a career, mm -hmm. most of the time they will ask two questions. They will ask, how much is it paid? Right. And then, is it stressful? Right, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So people always tell you what to do. I mean, what job to, to take. But yeah. no one really tells you how to find a job in the first place. Mm. Like okay. what job to take as opposed to how to find it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, like we are all unique. And I think the problem about our society is ever since we were kids, you know, we were being put in a box. Yeah. For example, like in the education system or even in work culture. Mm -hmm. For example, in school, we put students in art stream, art stream in one, one class, science stream in one, one class. class. You're given an ex assessment or exam at the end of the semester and you have to pass. If you pass, it means you're smart. If you don't pass, it means you're not smart. Right. But the true. thing is, we, all, we are all smart in our own ways. True. Yeah. School is, is just one part of intelligence, you know. Right. They're trying to test your IQ. But we are more than that. Yeah. You know, we are, we are a diverse being. Mm -hmm. Even at workplace, like you go to a job, they give you this list of like job description or a list of procedure that the, you need to follow through just to achieve a specific outcome. Yeah, the KPIs. Yes, KPI and the kind of stuff. But the thing is, there are so many other ways to achieve that outcome. True. Different people, they do it, they do work in different ways, they express True. work in different ways you know, right. in order to achieve the same outcome, yeah. you know? So we are, we are all different, but the thing about our culture is we try to confine confine one another and we try to make everyone like everyone else it is oh my god i totally agree with you and it's like, sad yeah, yeah they don't value the in individuality of us of us you know being an individual yeah so because we do things differently and then when someone does it different it's like a it seems like a taboo it seems like something that is you you're against the odds yeah, yeah it's like you're being frowned upon yeah. like, like why are you doing that uh, you yeah know? it's yeah. not supposed to be that way it, yeah you should do this you must do this because it has been that way since the start you know mm. because they never they've been you know trained to be that certain way is because they've been always it, it has always been that way mm. it, right nobody actually questions it and so when one person questions and try to turn things around and then it's like Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. I think that's the thing about um, our society in yeah. general. Like, ever since we were born, we've been given a prescription or a list of instruction about how to live life. Yeah. Right? So, when we were, ever since we were young, we've learned that we are born, we go to school to study, we go to university. We work, we get married, we work some more, we retire and then we die. Yeah. We've been taught what to think, how, how to, to act, yes. how to feel, um, 
what course to take, which university to go to, how much money to make, or yeah. what job to work in, you know, like all of these list of things that we should abide by, all yeah. of these rules. Mm -hmm. And because this belief has been so deeply ingrained in us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we never really question them. Yeah. Right? True. It's something, it's like, uh, like something that is already prescribed and it's something that we should just follow. So yeah. we never really think like, is this the absolute truth? Correct, yeah. Yeah, and as a result, we go through life on autopilot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Even though we may not enjoy the work that we're doing, but we think like, okay, work is supposed to be like this. Work is not meant to be fun. It's supposed to be something that we just endure. Yeah. Something to pay the bills as True. a monthly paycheck. Yeah, like how, you know, some of us would say, every work is stressful, Maybe like that. Yes. Um, you have to sacrifice something. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. we just recently yeah, talked about that, right? Yeah, yeah so it shouldn't yeah. be that way because if you, you like what you're doing, you shouldn't have that, you wouldn't have that thought. Yeah. So, yeah. And we are normalizing that. Yeah. We are normalizing like work should be something that is full of pain and suffering. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't. And yeah, and because we are normalizing this, we become victims of a rat race, you know, like this yes. rat race of mm -hmm. trying to mm -hmm. achieve more and more and it's never satisfied. Mm, yep. You know, in a society that thrives on competition and comparison instead of embracing ourselves authentically. Correct. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree with that at this yeah. point. And everybody is just on this race and it never ends. The yeah. chase never ends. The chase never ends. You're never satisfied because you're trying to chase something externally. You, you think like happiness is out there. there. Yeah. And you get burned out after doing yeah. that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's why. And that's why like at the end of the day, they feel unhappy and yet they still wonder why. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the question. Most of us actually are asking ourselves, you know, like I have everything, but why? Yeah. Why I still feel this way. Yeah. And you think like the answer is some somewhere out, out there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm. That's something to think of. This really Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also I like this quote by Jay Shetty mm -hmm. where he says that you cannot be anything you want, mm -hmm. but you can be everything that you are. Yeah. For example, I cannot be you, you cannot be me, we cannot be like the other person. Yep. Who we can only be is ourselves. Ourselves. And, and the, the answer is already within. within. Yeah. It's about pulling that within ourselves, bringing up to the surface so that we can express them and contribute it to the world. You know, our unique authentic self. Wow, that's yeah. really nice quote. Mm -hmm. Never thought of that. Yeah. Because as, as an individual, I always value validation from people. That I, I'm going to be really honest. Like yeah, I yeah, used yeah. to think, I used, I was really bad. I was really on finding validation outside last time. Um, but then at one point in life, I felt like, no, I cannot constantly keep on finding validation from out, like my boss my parents, people around me only, you know, I have to validate myself because at the end of the day, at night, I'm being with myself. Early in the morning, mm. the exhaustion, the, I start every day with myself, yeah. you know, so I cannot be, keep, I cannot be, you know, constantly asking for pe people's validation and saying, yeah. am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? You know, at the end of the day also, we don't like people asking us for validation, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's really nice. It's, yeah. It's really something to think of, mm. right? And you cannot give something to other people the thing that you don't have yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, I, ha I have this quote. Um, someone told me this. Um, you have to fill your cup first yes. in order for you to fill others. Yes. So if your cup isn't full, you cannot fill other cups because you're not full mm. yourself. Like if your cup is empty, there's nothing else to give. give. Yeah. And then you go out and seeking it from other people, from someone else. Right. And that is where all the emptiness and insecurity comes from. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's very insightful. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now when we talk about, that's us as individual, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we talk about um, 
career, in a career-wise, right? Um, as an individual, um, we, always ha- we always have options, right? We always have options. And options can be seen as blessings to some. But it also... But some has doesn't have the option, you know, to, to choose their career path. So um, in your point of view, how do you weigh the options and how do you see these options as um, a blessing? Or, and how can one overcome that they, as an individual, they actually have the options, but it's just that they don't have the freedom to choose, pick and choose. Mm. So what are your opinions on that? Mm. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack in that question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, in a career-wise, um, how do you think one can weigh their options? First of all, I believe that we all have options. We all have options. We all right? have options. Mm-hmm. We all have choices. Mm-hmm. We all have free will. Mm-hmm. But what the question is like, what is holding us back? Yeah, what is the opt- obstacle holding us back? Right. Yeah. Um, different people have different circumstances. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's also, that affects how one thinks and one perceives certain things. That's why when they think they have no options, they actually do. It's just that they are not um, aware of that, of the options given or the, or the things that they can choose or the free will that they have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. One, of, one of it is probably because of how we have been conditioned like we think that we are in this one career, mm-hmm. we have this college degree and we're meant to use it mm-hmm. or we're meant to be this mm-hmm. until we die. And we, don't ha- and we don't have any other option and we cannot change, yeah. Yeah. which is not true. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> as you grow, as you understand yourself better, as you learn more about yourself, things will change. Yeah. Just like in life in general, you know, like, you evolve. Plans. Yes, you evolve. You know, there's a quote like, um, the only thing constant in life is change. Right. Yeah. Yes, correct. So you will always change, like how seasons change, you know, plants, they grow, die. Um, did I say plants? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plants can change, goals can change, but most importantly, you change, you know, yeah. as you grow all the as you learn about yourself more. So, um, the f- wait, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> How do you weigh the options? How do you weigh your options? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a framework that I usually teach mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you decide whether a career is right for you? Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned, like, how you find your career is the right career is defined by whether it's aligned with who you are, right? Because everyone is unique. So I came up with this framework that people can follow. It's almost like a guide, Mm -hmm. but the answers will be different for different people, but it it only acts as a blueprint so that they can follow through. So the guide is this equation. Ikigai. Ikigai? Yeah, I don't know if you heard about it before, but Mm -hmm. Ikigai is a Japanese term. Mm -hmm which means reason for being. Reason for being. Yeah, for being. What, oh. is, your, what is your reason for being here oh. on earth? Like, what is your purpose? Oh. Yeah, so ikigai plus values, your personal values, mm-hmm. plus personality, your personality. So it's based on us. Yes. Right. So that is a framework, almost like a, a makeup of who you are. See. Yeah. So if you can find the answer within that framework and you can live a life that is aligned mm-hmm. with that, mm-hmm. then I think you're off in, a, in the right direction. You know what's yeah. interesting? Mm-hmm. Um, so the topic today is finding, um, finding the right career by being yourself, right? It's yeah. something that I just came up with like at 4 p.m. last night. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that ikigai means being, you know? Yes. So it's, it's really problem. interesting. It actually aligns with what we're talking about. Yep. So, well, wow, interesting, yeah, interesting. And it's something that I've been teaching people a lot also. I see. Yeah. I so see. ikigai actually, um, it has four elements in it. Mm-hmm. So first is what you're good at. Okay. 
yeah, what you're good at doing. Okay. And then what you love to do. Okay. What the world needs. Okay. And lastly is what you can be paid for or what you can re be rewarded for. So these four things. So if you can find like the intersection within okay. all of these four elements, mm -hmm. then that is your Ikigai. Okay, but the, how does it work? How this Ikigai can help you to um, choose your career and how, um, as an individual? Yeah. So like, as I mentioned, like we don't want to go from one career to another career, mm -hmm. only having to experience the same problem over mm -hmm. again, right? So we want to first... Instead of going out there looking for the answer, we have to first go inside. Learn about yourself. Yeah, first. learn about yourself. Dive, dive deep within yourself and then ask yourself, like, who am I? Right. What are my strengths? Mm -hmm. What are my personality? Um, what do I value? When it comes, for example, when it comes to work, what do I value? Like me, when it comes to my work, I value freedom. I value autonomy, mm -hmm. being able to do things my own way, being my own boss, mm -hmm. uh, work with whoever I want, whenever I want. Right. And then being able to express myself creatively. Those are my values. And then you, other than that, you also have to know, like, what are your personality? Whether your personality, is it fit for this specific career? Mm -hmm. For example, if you're a very creative, artistic person, mm -hmm. but you work as an accountant, for example, you know, something is very rigid, office work, yeah. like full of uh, analytics and numbers. Of yeah. course, it won't suit you. Yeah. And you're going to feel very burnt out and depressed and drained. Yeah. And some people, they don't know why. Right. right. They, but, the, but why that happens is because it's not aligned with who you are. And that's yeah. why you have to know yourself first so that you can find a career that suits that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It mm. makes sense, though. You have to understand yourself first in order for you to choose which career path you yes. want to yeah. decide to go with, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we have talked about the um, how one can choose the career that they want, right? Um, how about when? Mm. When one knows is when one know is the right time for them to decide and plan or like you say framework their own career path. Yeah. Um, one as a young adult, as our viewers, I I'm sure most of them are young adults mm. from uh, maybe fresh grads, um, out from high school, universities, and also one from people who already experience working, who's actually working right now. Mm. Um, to switch in, and like, you know, take, take the decision to, okay, I want to change myself. Yeah. I, want, I, want, I want to try something new. So yeah. when is the right time? Actually, this answer can be applied to both actually mm -hmm. for like young working adults and also for, you say, like students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when is the right time is going to be different for different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because some people, they go through their college studies or they go through work even though they don't enjoy it mm -hmm. they they still can manage it they still can tolerate yep. so they don't really mind so the question about whether they should change careers or whether they should quit it never crossed their mind they're just going through the motions but but they feel fine you know they get a monthly mm. paycheck they yeah. live the life that they're currently living and they're okay yeah but for some people there comes a point where they go through the same motion over and over again yeah. until they reach a point just like what I experienced, you know? Like I reach a point, I call this like the wake up call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like when life finally shakes you out of your, your slumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, your sleepwalking, you know? Your sleeping state uh, when you're awake. Yeah. Yeah. And that is like the inner crisis that finally... Uh, push people out of their their normalcy and mm. they start to step back and reassess and ask themselves like is this is this the life that I want for mm -hmm. myself is there more to life than this what changes can I make yeah yeah so for different people it's going to be very different but for those who want to switch careers but they are still maybe on the fence yes. yeah for whatever reason, it could be financial reason or family or um, 
most of the time it's because of fear, you know. Yeah. Work environment also. Yeah, work environment. I usually like to ask them these three questions. Okay. So that they are more aware before making decision. So first is, what are the obstacles that is holding you back from taking the leap? Yeah. And then the second one is, oh, so what are the obstacles? And then what? And then why is it preventing you? Why is the obstacle preventing you from taking yes. the leap? Yeah. Why is the obstacle preventing you from taking the leap? Second is, um, if you continue living the life, uh, I mean, how will your life look like if you continue doing what you're doing? And will you regret it? Oh, this is some serious questions. Yeah. You have to sit down with yourself to yes. answer yourself. You have to. No one else can answer. People can tell you what the answer That's is, it. but it is not their place to tell the answer. Yeah, exactly. You have to really be honest with yourself. Yeah. And then the last question is, what advice would you give your younger self? Hmm. Interesting. But how does yeah. what uh, how does what advice you give to your younger self relates to all the the two questions? It's almost like imagine yourself in the future. Imagine yourself in the future, mm -hmm. then you get to advise your younger self. Mm. So if like you're currently living the life that you're living right now, and you don't like it, mm -hmm. you don't you're not passionate about your work, you don't enjoy your job. So what advice can you give your younger self? Would it be the same? Would it be like, um, don't take the risk, just continue, continue. living life the yeah. way you're living? Or would it be something else? So that advice can empower you to make the decision right now. Right. Yeah. Right. But you've got to be really, really honest with yourself. Very. And sit down with yourself. Yeah. This is a really hard question. It sounds simple, but mm -hmm. when you actually sit through it, not many can actually, you know, have the courage to be really honest with themselves, mm. you know, to find that mm. answer. Yeah. And be and one of the reasons why is also because they may not like the answer. <gasps> yeah. They, they already know the but, answer, actually. But they don't like it. They don't like it or they don't accept it or they are still in denial. <gasps> they are still trying to rationalize what they're going through. Like they say, it's okay, I can take it just another few more months. Like this will be better in the future. Wow. It's like I will be happy when this happens. Right. But will you really? Yeah. Yeah. How long more would you want to be in that situation? Mm. Be in that circle, cycle that you don't really want to be in? Yeah. Oh, and so the thing about life is once you start to question about how you've been living life, if you don't change, life will continue to shake you up. Like the universe will continue to keep on nudging you and then you're gonna feel very, very uncomfortable. You start to question yourself over and over again until you take up the call. So that's why it's called a wake up call. So the universe is always ringing the phone, but it depends whether you wanna take up the call or not. Yeah. I feel like this is, <laughs> this is for me. <laughs> for Mind some work. reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's actually really insightful. I, yeah. I've actually, okay, to be honest, I've already had like a few, um, uh, what do you call that? A few, I it consider it as like a wake up call mm -hmm. for, for me, but I keep denying it, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, is this what I want to do with life? There's so mm. many things. Um, I question myself, my worth. So, you know, whatever you said just now is really something that I actually should sit down and think about myself. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's actually, it's harder than it. It's harder than you think, you know, when you really facing at that point of your life where you have to either pick and choose to be in your comfortable zone, but you actually grew out from it already and you have grown so much but you just don't want to leave that that part of your life where you've you've always been there 
you that you've always known. Yeah, you have, yes, you have always known. Because the uncertainty of of trying new things is sometimes scary. So the fear of that is it's real. Mm. But again, how, would you want to stay here or would you want to try something? Mm. Right? Yeah. So you can ask yourself those three questions. Right. Okay, like, I should do that. Yeah. That's a homework for me, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you say... You say, like, you want to try something new, but there's something holding you back. Yeah. So, like, the first question is, like, what are the obstacles? What is preventing you from taking that first step? Mm -hmm. And why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something that I have to think about. Yeah. Thank you, And I think, like, to be honest... I feel like all of us, deep down inside, we already know the answer. Yeah. Even though we may feel confused about it. I think the reason why we're feeling confused is like what you say. You know the answer, but you just don't want... You're just being in denial. Mm. That's when you're confused. So, so like just now you point here, right? Like we know the answer. It's like in the heart. Yeah. <laughs> but we are in denial, it's in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a battle there between the head and the heart. Wow. Between the intellect and also like the inner intelligence, intelligence that is already here. Yeah. So there's a friction. Yeah. And this what is what we have known. And this is more than yeah. that. So like, I always tell people like, the heart, uh, the head, it just wants to protect you. Yeah. But the heart wants to experience. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> Mind blown. Woman of silence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I, wow. Something to ponder upon. Yes. And I think why, so I'm talking a lot. You should, yeah, stop me if I'm no, talking too no, much. No, no, you yeah. continue. <laughs> Just continue. I have so much to say. This is really interesting, <laughs> really interesting. And I, I'm sure that, you know, the audience really appreciate this because we don't really talk about this. Um, and it's usually like straightforward on like, okay, career path is supposed to be this, 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 yeah. you know. Like, like what you say, it's, it's given to us. It's been um, planned for us and we just have to abide with it or yep. follow how those, you know, the previous generation have done it. And mm. it's always like that, right? But I think this conversation is, is really good because it probably in, in inspires some of them out there to, you know, break the cycle yeah. from what is norm. Yeah. And I think our generation is going towards that. But, you know, having this kind, kind of conversation just opens more doors for people to think, about themselves and think about how they want to live life rather than, yeah. you know, being planned out for them. Yeah, I mean, that's what I hope for and also that's what I'm trying to advocate, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to teach people. Because, as again, again, as I mentioned, like, we've, ever since we were young, we've been told what to do mm -hmm, and also, mm -hmm. like, how to think. Yeah, how to think. Right, yes. how to think. That you should do this, you should do that. Yeah. This is... This is the right way to do it. So yep. we're living in someone else's idea of what a good life is. Yes, correct. And we never give ourselves the space or permission to think what is a good life for ourselves. Yeah. So we think so much with our head. We try to rationalize things, justify, uh, come up with conclusions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we also need to realize that other than the intelligence that is up here, there's also another intelligence which is here, you know, in our heart. Within us, yep. Back in our hunter-gatherer ancestor days, you know, like mm -hmm. Stone Age and all that kind of stuff, like many, many million mm -hmm. years, million, I think it's million, or yeah, thousands yeah. of years ago. <laughs> yeah. They, they don't have technology like we do, right? Yeah. They, they don't have the internet, like how are they going to communicate? Like they don't have all, all the privileges that we have now. But what they have is the, the intelligence which is within. The instinct. Yes, exactly. So they have, so they have to only rely on gut instincts or intuition, yeah. Yeah. or there's this inner knowing, you know. Because without this, this inner knowing, yeah. they would be eaten alive by predators, right? True. Yeah. So this instinct that they have is a way for them to survive in the wild. Right. Right. And that intelligence has always been inside here. It's always with innate within us. 
even as we evolve up until now. But because we have been taught to think with our heads so much, mm -hmm. we start to lose that. In to lose that inner knowing. Yeah. Yeah. And we learn to not trust it anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we are so separated, we are so disconnected from it. Yeah. You know, our intellect and also our, our head and also our heart, heart is so disconnected, so separated. Yeah. So like what we can do now, and I'm also like encouraging people is to tap more into that, that inner knowing that has always been inside. Yeah. You know? Because most of the time, it won't be a loud voice or um, something very obvious, you know, because most of the time it will be like, very subtle nudges or like little whispers, yeah. you know, like when you ask yourself a question, and then suddenly like there's this inner voice that tells you the answer, like it already knows. Yeah. But then the head is gonna say like, is it true? Is this right? What if, what if that happens? You know, I start trying to justify because it's just trying to protect you. Yeah. It's just its job. Yeah. It's doing his job. Yeah, it's just doing his job, you know, as a good employee, it's just doing his job. <laughs> yeah, but they're just that, like it depends on how you use it. It yeah. can be a great servant or it can be a terrible master. Wow. So it depends how you use it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, but now we're talking about how, you know, um, someone who is a young adult like us and we have a experience with working. What about those teenagers what about how would they you know how can they be themselves and decide that they are more than what their parents tell them to what what their parents tell them to do yeah how would you how would you advise them mm. and how would you advise them to be brave to you know stick for what they believe in yeah especially in career choices or anything in life yeah so Especially when, you know, when we were kids or when we were younger, mm -hmm. we, our parents are like our idols, right? Mm -hmm. Like this authority figure that we abide by. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, they, their intentions are pure, yeah. you know, they're yeah. trying to protect us. They, uh, they just want to make sure that we're safe, we're yeah. happy and we have all that we need. Um, but there comes a point where you have to be your own parent. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to make your own choices as well. Like you, you cannot continue to let someone else run your life because right. if you do that, then that happiness will always be somewhere else. You're, you'll always be looking for happiness outside. Outside. Yeah. So what I can tell like teenagers especially is that they're still young. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's still so much more to explore in life. Yeah. If their parents are telling them that they should be this, they should be that, and the teenagers are stressed out about it, what I can tell to both teenagers and to parents is like, just chill. Relax. <laughs> Relax. Relax. <laughs> you have so many more years to, to go, you know? Yeah. There's no point about stressing out, trying to be better than someone else because you why we're feeling insecure is because we're comparing ourselves with other people we're yeah, comparing yeah. ourselves with other people's timeline exactly timeline. exactly like yeah. for asians especially you know yes. how our yeah. parents like hey, you look at this person you know mm. he's doing this doing that yeah. and then what about you yeah. and then how the pressure and um how sometimes our parents i mean they come like you say their intentions are pure but sometimes mm. it can be hurtful because they don't really value our strength that much sometimes because mm. you know the the most you can be sometimes can be because they want more so it, it's the less is the least to them you know yeah. like, have you have you ever heard like you know some people say oh when i get 98 and then my parents will say where's the other two yes. points right yeah yeah so it's really hard la. especially asian parents most of them they have the same mentality yeah and then these kids would you know feel insecure, incompatible, always being compared to someone else. Mm. So I think that's why that, that, that led them to, you know, you know what, I'm just going to listen to, to my parents and, and because this is what my parents have already known and it seems to work out. So mm. I'll just follow that. But what, 
what are your advice for those who say like, no, but this doesn't work out and really want to challenge that? Yeah. I mean, in your own experience also, right? As yeah. a medical doctor, you said that your parents were really proud of you. Mm. I'm sure there's some, I mean, there's some, some parts where your when you quit, your parents have. Oh, definitely. Right. Yeah. So, uh, may I know your in your um, family? Are you the firstborn? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go. The pressure must be really high. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. How, definitely. I mean, in. Based on your experience, mm. how do you overcome that? Yeah. So, like, I'm the eldest among my three siblings. And I'm, I'm also... Because I come from Strawa, from a very small community. Uh-huh. I'm also one of the very few to become a doctor. Mm-hmm. And so that is something that not only my parents, but my whole community are very proud of. Because we're a, we're a tight-knit group, you know. And I so see. everyone knows everyone. Okay. So when I became a doctor... It spreads. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the news spreads. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So it was a lot of pressure for me when I was contemplating on resigning. And when I told the idea to my parents, they were very, very hesitant at first. They were very reluctant. Uh, yeah. But they came a point, like, as I mentioned, like, are your fears bigger than your dreams? Mm. Like, which one is more worthy? Yeah. Am I going to continue down this path? just because that is what my parent wants for me. And again, as I said, like our parents, they want the best for us, but also what, they're, what they are advising us most of the time are based on their understanding of reality. Yeah, right. It's yeah. Because they have always known that. Yes. So they never come up from that. And then probably because their environment also has, has known that for the longest time. So when someone wants to step out of it, it's scary, you know, especially yes. your child yeah. wants to go out to the world where you don't know whether this child is safe exactly. or not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. your child wants to go out of something that you know nothing about. Yes. And that scares you because what you want for your child is for, for them to be safe, you know. Yeah. It's just good intention. Yeah. Also, I think because our culture, especially like Asians, um, we emphasize more about external achievements mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because we see that as a way for us to become more stable financially. Yeah. Right? Right. And most of the time we focus more on um, what we lack, our yeah. weaknesses. Yeah. For example, like we have 98%, but where's the other 2%? <laughs> you know? Two? <laughs> well, what, do you, what do you mean, mom? This is already A. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a problem, you know? That's a big problem because yeah. we are emphasizing so much on our weaknesses rather yeah. than trying to enhance our strengths. Correct, correct. Yeah. So we grew up thinking that we're never going to be enough. Definitely. Yeah, we're never enough individuals. But like you said, at the end of the day, we're still a whole, a whole person, you know, regardless of what, what we have out here, right? Yeah. And so um, we had a conversation before this and you and I asked you about um, how do you, how do you, def- how do you help those who keeps on failing, right? Mm. And then you say, define failure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and failure is just a concept of one thinking that they fail something. But actually, it could be a lesson for them. It could be something that they have to get out with. Or maybe maybe it's also a wake-up call for them to get out from that situation and then probably move to another path, right? Mm, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, mm. we never had the chance to think of it that way when we were growing up. Yeah, because society has their own definition of failure. Yes. And because that is how we define failure, we never try to reframe it in a different mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. right? Because we, society usually say that when you don't achieve this certain award, accolade, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. grade, mm-hmm. degree, whatever, mm-hmm. it means you're a failure. If I quit my job, that means I'm a failure. But for me personally, and again, as I mentioned, like, there's no such thing as failure for yep. me, yep. you know, only either lessons for you to learn or they are just detours yes. trying to direct you into a better them. direction. Yes. Yeah. So it d- depends on how you reframe that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And again, going back to like us trying to people emphasizing so much on our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. 
right? Instead of seeing those as, as weaknesses, why don't we see them as someone else's gifts? Mm. So our strengths are our gifts. True. That is what makes us unique, you know, our, yeah. our capabilities. But our weaknesses, instead of trying to focus so much on that weakness, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why don't we try to enhance our strengths and then find someone else who can complement our weakness? Right. Because those weaknesses could be someone else's strengths Strength. or capability or gifts. Right. So we give it to them. We don't have to take their, like, yeah. their gifts. We already have ours. Right. So why are we so like emphasizing on, on them? That, yeah. yeah. That's but, one way to see it. Yeah, that's a good perspective. Mm. Never thought of it that way. Mm -mm. It's really it's really good. Okay, back to you know, as we say <clears throat> like you say, um when you when you quit from being a medical practitioner, right? Mm. And then the community was, you know, questioning you, condemning you. Yeah judging you um, because I think the reason why they are judging um, is because they find what you have is a blessing like your experience oh. is a bless right because not many people can go up to that level being a medical practi practitioner right so but how um, how do we come how do we how to say um, um, okay let me put this in words yeah, sure. <laughs> take your time take your time <laughs> Um, how do we find um, these uh, blessings? Mm. How, wait, no. How do we? Uh, how do, how I do we see them as blessings? How do? How because it seems to be a blessings for some people. However, it oh. it is not for some. You know, mm. it is just something that like they just don't want. They it. don't want it. Yeah. Mm. So what are your advice for, you know, those people who think um, that, because obviously, you know, um, insecure people or people who think that they're not enough would think other people's blessings or options are, are um, just, what do you call that? It's like a privilege. A privilege. Something that, yeah, um, like a privilege. But actually, it is not. It is something that you can choose to do yourself mm. if you put yourself, um, you decide to make that choice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So how, what are your advice on, on, um, on people who think this way, like having this kind of perfect perspective? Yeah. So different people, they have their own unique journey. Yeah. You know? And we are all different, again, as I mentioned, and we are all not meant to be the same. Like, yeah, your college degree says uh, you, graduate, you graduated from being from medicine. Mm -hmm. And so you're meant to be a doctor. Right. But then you become a doctor and you realize that it's not what you want. It's not what you enjoy. Yeah. And it's okay. So change. But some people, some people, they're against that because they say like, I'm privileged to have this career. Yeah. Like everyone else is fighting to have this to career. Have, so yeah. I should be grateful and I yeah. should just, you know, just continue to persevere. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why so many people are, are unhappy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why so many people are burnt out, drained, depressed, anxious. Mm -hmm. Because they are becoming someone that they're not. Because they're living other people's dream, like like you said, mm. other people's dreams, other people's idea of what, what they should, should do. do. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, for me, I see everything as a blessing. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a mistake mm -hmm. in life or mm -hmm. in the universe. Mm -hmm. It depends how you reframe it. Again, as just like failure, you know. Mm -hmm. People say this is like bad luck. Yeah. But instead of seeing it that way, it's very demotivating, right? Yeah. Instead of seeing it that way, like everything is a blessing. Whatever you're going through is something that you're meant to go through. True. Yeah. So it's about how do you see that? Uh, some people, they see obstacles as a hindrance. Yeah. Something that's preventing them from achieving their dreams. But instead of 
and then they question themselves. They say like, why is this happening to me? It shouldn't be this way. Yeah. Instead of seeing it that way, what if we reframe it? We, uh, we see ob- what if we see obstacles as opportunities? Mm. As something that we can grow or learn from. Instead of saying, why is this happening to me? We can say to ourselves, what opportunity is trying to emerge? Or what opportunity is trying to unfold mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from this situation? Uh, what are the lessons that I am meant to learn here? Yeah. Who do I need to become in this situation? Right. Yeah. Right. So when you shift that, nothing is a coincidence anymore. Nothing is bad luck anymore. It's always an opportunity for you to learn and to grow and to be better. Mm-hmm. Because one mistake or one failure mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. you went through is just another lesson for you to move on into a better direction is a way for you to understand yourself better. Like, okay, this didn't work out. What else is out there? Right. right. Yeah. Because there's always an option. There's always an option to yep. stop, do, make a decision for changing yourself, right? Yeah. And people say like, we don't have a choice that we are meant to be one career mm-hmm. until we retire. It's just... An, a concept right it's just an idea right it's just right. A, it's just a belief structure that has been it's a, just a belief concept that has been conditioned to us yeah. and because they are conditioned it doesn't mean that they are absolute truths they are just a relative truths right, right yeah so truths can be different for different people but how do you see it is more, the most important right Mm. Because I always see people with, you know, different circumstances, maybe, you know, maybe they have, um, not to say uh, a lot more hardships, but maybe, you know, they grew up from a place where opportunities are not given equally, so Mm. they always say that, oh, these people, they are here because they have privilege and then after that mm. when those people have the op- have the option to choose not to choose the privilege and then they will say why are you being ungrateful right so it's it, it's usually we don't discuss about this kind of mindset so i really like how you say it's just a concept and it's how we see our circumstances and how we work through what we have and mm. think it as this is not my circumstances i should think this is as a blessing so with what I have, what can I do more, right? Yeah. And that's also a very interesting uh, mentality, you know. Like yeah. People who say like, oh, why are you doing this? Uh, this is your privilege. Why are you like stripping away your stripping privilege? Away, yeah. and all the things that you, you've worked so hard for. Mm-hmm. And that kind of mentality is the exact mentality that is holding a lot of people back. Right. Yeah, because... <clears throat> There's two types of mindset, you know. There's abundance mindset and mm-hmm. there's also scarcity mindset. Right. Yeah, scarcity or lack mindset. Yeah. So this world, this universe is is abundant. There's right. so much resources for everyone. There's enough for everyone. Yep. But when you come from a scarcity mindset, a mindset, you always see everything as lacking. Yeah. as struggling and mm-hmm. that's why you feel the need to compete with one another yeah you always have to chase and you always have to achieve more and more and more because it's never enough right. and you're scared you're scared that you won't get enough yeah yeah so it's just about shifting that mind so what if you can see it as okay there's other opportunities for me there's an abundant of possibilities out there. Yeah. Let me go out and explore. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. So it depends how you see it. So I hope someone out there would, you know, with this mentality, you know, would see in this in, in a different way and probably, you know, change how you think, right? Yeah. Maybe not to say change yourself and you would change your life um hundred percent, hundred and eighty, but yeah. It's more on um, going out from that concept of 
lacking um like mm. sorry um yeah. scarcity scarcity mindset yeah yeah you know, thinking about all the abundance that you have and mm. then what can you do with it and what why is there more for you yeah mm-hmm. and it's really interesting really interesting mindset yeah wow food for thought yes <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot to think about huh? <laughs> a lot to think about yeah. How, wait this is just one episode guys <laughs> yeah this is one episode and mm-hmm. it can go deep <laughs> yep it's actually deeper than that mm-hmm. yeah oh it's yeah, really we're just interesting scratching the surface here mm-hmm. yeah it's really really um interesting that because most of us we don't really have the time to think about all of these um and you know think about ourselves mm. right we always yeah. think about the chase the things that we have to achieve and this i mean this whole this whole concept of finding your career was supposed to be like okay i'm finding something out there mm. but now talking to you it's like oh wait it's not out there it's in here mm. right it's me I have to know me first in order for me to find things out there. Yep. Mm. Wow. It's it's something that it blows my mind to be honest. Yeah. Because it's something that I mean I've already thought about it, but I'm sure some people only thought about it at the back of their mind mm. and never express it out there. Yeah. And I hope that with this podcast, you know, it it goes to those people who um really uh, inspires to be something more than what they are right now. Mm, yeah. And, you know, explore more of themselves. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, um, I have my last question for you. Mm, uh, yeah. Since we're out of time, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope to be, I hope that, you know, you can come here more and we would discuss so much more about, you know, ourselves. Mm. Um, self, um, uh, self discovery, self discovery, yeah. self empowerment, mm. things like that. Mm-hmm. I hope so. But before that, um, to end this podcast, I want to ask you: Why is it important to find the right career? Mm. Yeah. So I like this quote by Oprah Winfrey, mm-hmm. which is also my hero, where she says that everyone wants mm. to fulfill their highest truest expression of themselves as a human being right so we all want to grow and express ourselves in the highest potential as possible Mm -hmm. as authentic as possible right because when you do well i mean again as as you mentioned just now like when your own cup is full Mm -hmm. it overflows to other areas of your life true so when you when you do work that comes from your inner self, you know, mm-hmm. your inner purpose and fulfillment. It will flow to other areas of your life, like to relationships, to finance, mm-hmm. to health and fitness. How it's going to happen is, is a different matter. But what is going to happen is that is going to happen. Mm. Yeah. So when you're able to find a career that is aligned with who you are, you know, that fills your soul, it fills your cup, you will feel fulfillment, uh, joy, passion, you feel purpose. Because at the end of the day, that is all what we human beings want to achieve, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of feeling drained, yeah. like what most people feel at the end of the day after work, mm-hmm. when we do something that we are actually passionate about or that fills us up, we feel more energized. Correct. Motivated. Yeah, yeah more motivated. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, there are times when we feel tired, right? But that's just because our physical body has a limit. Yeah. But our soul feels very energized. Yeah. I mean, the tiredness is worth it, you know? Yes. I Whenever, like, you know, I do things that I like, I wake up, even though I'm tired, I wake up feeling fulfilled. Like, yes. Like, oh, yes, I've, I've done this, you know? Yeah. And I want to do more of it. Yeah. yeah. And you actually, the tired is just physical, but mentally... Uh, you don't really feel tired. Yeah. You just want to explore more and more and more of yeah. what you want. It's a different kind of tired. Yes, right? yes. It's it's not like the draining, like it's sucking your soul yeah, kind of it's tired. It's fulfilling. Yes, exactly. So I usually teach people like uh, there are four ways in how you can figure out if you find you have found your your purpose mm-hmm. or like four signs. Like first is 
that thing or that activity it makes you feel alive. Mm -hmm. Like as you said, like you're very excited to yeah. do it. Yeah, like it's the first thing that keeps you up in the morning, yeah. uh, like gives a spring in your step. Yeah. You know, that rapture or that bliss, that passion that you feel deep inside. Yeah. You know, that aliveness. So secondly is you have, a, you're in a state of flow. Oh. Meaning that when you do something or a specific activity, for example, a thing that you like, mm -hmm. you lose track of time. Right. Yeah, because you're in flow, you're so immersed in doing that thing. Yeah, and you lost the track of time. Yeah, and an hour feels like a minute, you know, as opposed to you doing something that you dread. Like oh, one right. minute feels like forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. When you do something you love, you lose track of time because you're so into it mm. and you want to learn more and more, you want to do more of it. Mm -hmm. So that's second. The third one is, it feels natural to you. Right. As if like when you do something that feels very natural to you, you feel like you're in your element. Okay, like right. I'm meant to do this. This is where I belong. Like it just clicks for you. you know? right. like, like the jigsaw puzzle, it just fits. Fits, yeah. yeah. It feels very natural. And then the lastly is um, comfort. Mm. There's a sense of contentment inside of you when you do it. You feel like this is right. Like this is where I belong. Like I am meant to do this. Like I... nothing else in the, in the world uh, matters. matters anymore. I mean, in, in more like a, like a spiritual yeah, sense, you yeah. know, like you feel, you just feel calm and content when yeah. you do it yeah so those are the four signs that you can look out for right yeah so when you again going back to the question how do you, uh, why is it important to find the right career so when you can when you're able to find a career that is aligned with who you are that comes from your inner soul it will seep into other areas of your life yeah but also one thing that i want to remind everyone is that your career or the work that you do for a living is just one area of your life. It doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define who you are. It's just one aspect of your life. You are one whole being. Your work is just one aspect. Just like other areas of your life, like health and fitness is just one aspect. Mm -hmm. Finance is just one aspect. Relationship is just one aspect. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you are already whole and complete just the way you are. Right. Like deep inside. Right. Yeah. So it's about tapping into that, that yes. wholeness that you already are, that you already have. And in whatever you do, it will flow from that state of being. Wow. Yeah. And that's when everything goes right, right? Like, yeah. You know, when you tap into yourself, then that's when you can find yourself in a great career and yeah. goes on and on in life. Yeah, and you evolve. Evolve, yes, as yeah. a person. Yeah. You, may be one in, you may be in one career now, but as you grow, as you, you know, develop, as you mature, as you evolve, as a human being on this mm -hmm. planet, you change and your career can change as well. Yeah, you can yeah. explore more things, experience more things. Yeah, there's never an end point, there's never an end destination. Your journey is for as long as you live, it will going to be a lifelong journey until your last breath. That I can assure you. <laughs> yeah, again, like nothing in life is constant. Uh, the only thing constant in life it's is change. change. And we need to remove the idea that our identity is tied to our career. Right. We need to let go of the idea that this a sen the sense of who we are is what we do for our living. Yeah. We are not our labels, our titles, our job roles, our occupation. We are more than that. Right. And we have to be wary of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So thank you so much, Dr. Crystal. It was a really insight, thoughtful, deep yeah. <laughs> conversation. Yeah, a lot to ponder, a lot to ponder. Yes, yeah, a lot to ponder yeah. uh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for everyone as well. <laughs> I mean, it's really interesting that you talk about your workshops and um, because you're a life coach, right? Yeah. At this point, I'm convinced to make you my life coach. Oh, that's sweet of you. Yeah, <laughs> no, but really that's a good true. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really true, true. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that you come here with us and share your thoughts mm. and your insights on um, this finding the right career by being yourself. 
more on actually finding yourself to yep. find the right career. Mm, yes, exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. Maybe we should change the title. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah. again, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you so much to everybody who actually tuned into this podcast. And um, I think that's it from us. I hope to see you again, Dr. Crystal. And mm-hmm. I hope to see you guys again in our next part of podcast. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with Nespace. And see you again next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Shay. And thank you to Nespace as well. See you you in the next podcast.